Now that we're familiar with graphing a compound inequality, we're first of all going to solve the in compound inequality before we graph it. So at the end of this lesson, you will be able to solve a compound inequality in one variable. All right, we're going to jump right into these problems. Our goal is to be able to have uh, just an x by itself and then something to graph. We're going to get an answer or answers for x. So we're just going to start with this problem. I'm going to put a 4 in that blank. Um, one thing I might want to look at on this specific problem, it is a connected problem. So I know when I'm done, I'm going to have a connected graph. Um, we basically want to get this information that is in the middle. We just want there to be an x there. So I'm going to, I'm a line drawer on these ones, and I want this x by itself. So if you think of just a normal solving problem, if I were going to solve that, I would add 8. But notice, I actually have two different equations that I get to add 8 to. So I'm going to add 8 to all three places. So when I do that, I'm going to get, whoops, negative 2 plus 8 is 6. I still have the 3x in the middle, and I still have the 12. Okay, and then the next thing that I'm going to do on this one is we're going to divide by 3 just like we would in a normal solving problem. Okay, so when I do that, I'm going to get 2, and in the middle I now just have x, and on the right side, 12 divided by 3 is 4. Okay, the last thing that I need to do is just move these signs back down to my answer. So I'll just move them on back down, so that is the solution. And now from here, I would like to graph it, and since it's a connected graph, I know that x is going to be some number between 2 and 4. So 2 goes on my number line, 4 goes on my number line, I'm going to put 3 in the middle of those two. For each of them, because they each have equal signs, I know they're each going to be a closed in circle because we get to include them. And then I know my answer is somewhere between 2 and 4. So I'm going to connect it, and that's how we would work that problem. All right, I'm going to let you try one here. I'm going to put a 21 there. So if you would just take a minute and pause the video, see how you do on it, and come back and check your answer. All right on this one, again, I'm definitely a line drawer. And from here, if I want to get what's in the middle, just the x by itself, I'm going to start by doing plus 7. But I do have to do it to all parts of the problem. 5 plus 7 is 12 in the middle. Now I just have 4x. And then 21 plus 7 is 28. And then at this point in time, we're going to divide all three parts by 4. So I'll have 3 in the middle. I now just have x. And on the other side, I now have 7. And then don't forget when we're done, we do want to just bring these signs back down and put them in my problem. So we're just kind of following my lines down, and that's where we put them. So again, it's a connected graph. So I know I'm going to connect my answer. 3 goes on my number line, 7. I'm just going to put 5 in the middle of those two. Neither of them have an equal sign, so both of them will get open circles because we're not including them in the solution. And then I know my answer is somewhere between 3 and 7, so I'm going to go ahead and connect those two graphs. All right, let's take a look at some or situations here. For this one, let's put a 25 here. How about? Okay, if I see the word or, I know it's going to be a disconnected graph, which pretty much means I have two separate problems. So we're just going to treat each of these problems like they're two totally separate problems. So I'm just going to draw a line to show that those are two 100% disconnected problems. Okay, if I'm going to solve this, I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So I'll get 6x is less than 12. And then we'll divide both sides by 6, and I'll get x is less than 2. Or, now come over to this side, just solve it like normal. We'll subtract 1. I'll get 8x is greater than 24. I'll then divide by 8, and I'll get x is greater than 3. So either x is less than 2, or x is greater than 3. So we're ready to graph it. So remember, for OR graphs, we do graph them separately. So I'll put 2 on the number line. 3. If I do need to put something in the middle, I'll put 2.5, I guess. All right, x is less than 2 is going to be an open circle pointing to the left. x is greater than 3 is going to be an open circle pointing to the right. So again, those represent all the numbers that would work in that inequality. Okay, number 10, we will put a 7 in that spot. Um, this is one I'd like you to go ahead and try, so please pause the video at this point in time, try it, and then come back and check your answer. Alright, on this one we are going to start by subtracting 1 from both sides. So I'll get 3x is less than 3. If I divide both sides by 3, I get x is less than 1. And then OR. On this problem, we'll just work it like normal, so we'll add 5 to both sides. I'll get 2x is greater than 12. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2, I'll get x is greater than 6. So either x is less than 1, or x is bigger than 6. Obviously it couldn't be both, so it's going to be one of those two. So a disconnected graph, which means we'll just treat each of them separately, 1 and 6, 
I think I'll put three in the middle of those two. Okay, um, neither one of them have an equal sign, so I'm going to just put an open circle for each of them. Less than one would be going to the left, and greater than six is going to be going to the right. And again, we can check x is greater than six, my arrow matches, x is less than one, my arrow matches. All right, let's try one more. The reason that I picked this one is because we are going to have a little bit of a negative situation, so I just wanted to discuss that. On this specific problem, it's a connected problem, so we know I'm going to have a connected graph. The first thing that I'm going to do is draw my lines. I want to get the, the x by itself, so the first thing that I'm going to do to get rid of the negative 2 is we're going to do plus 2 to all of my parts. Negative 2 plus 2 will give me 0. Um, here I'll get negative 3x in the middle, and then 1 plus 2 is 3. And then I need to divide all three parts by negative 3. Okay, so here 0 divided by negative 3 is obviously 0. Um, here I'll get x, and 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. Okay, one thing that I want you to notice is we divided by a negative sign, which means these two signs need to get switched around. So this is going to be my answer. Then notice when I go to graph it, it's going to be a little bit different because when I go to graph it, um, 0 and negative 1, they're going to flip-flop on the number line because remember, negative 1 is on the left side and 0 is on the right side. And I can put like negative 0.5 in between. So watch when you put them on the number line that you put them appropriately. So um, no equal signs, so both of them are going to get open circles. And x is somewhere between those two, so we shade in between those two. So hopefully now you can solve a compound inequality.